Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is our last uh, panel, I mean, a round table with uh, two special guests, uh, Eric Tusan and Statis Kuvelakis. Um, the, the thing is, we are going to... Uh, er, uh, Statis will introduce uh, Eric's function uh, in the context of the political situation in Greece. And uh, Eric will introduce and say something about status uh, function. We thought this would be it would be more dynamic. Uh, so afterwards, uh, each of them will have a short introduction about political situation, about Syriza, about uh, 2015, of course, about the lessons and experience we can draw from uh, Syriza politics and. Uh, then we will have a short discussion, questions from the audience, and uh, this, is, this is it. So, um, Statis, we can begin uh, by, can you please? Okay, so I will, uh, so hi everyone, and many thanks, it's a great pleasure for, uh, for being here. Uh, and uh, I, I will say a few things to introduce Eric. Uh, Eric is a long-standing uh, political activist and campaigner with a very rich experience. Uh, he has many specificities of which I will mention only a few. Uh, he is based in Belgium, and this is where he. Uh, uh, the, this is also the center of uh, the network he has built around the theme on which he devoted a large part of his uh, uh, militant life, which is uh, the issue of uh, the public debt and its abolition. It started with the so-called, the then called third world, and then uh, extended, of course, to other, to other areas. And um, uh, he is also a genuine internationalist, and this is uh, how I would present him concerning Greece. Uh, Eric became, uh, a full actor of uh, the events in Greek, particularly uh, from 2010-2011 onwards. Uh, he brought to Greece the experience he had acquired uh, during the past decades around the issue of the abolition of the debt uh, in many areas of the world, well, in areas where precisely programs of structural adjustment had been implemented in order for those countries to uh, face somehow and to pay the debt they had contracted. Uh, this became particularly crucial in Latin America in uh, the context that was created by the rise of the left-wing governments uh, and uh, the popular upheavals in countries like Argentina, uh, which led to this country suspended the payment of uh, its debt, and more particularly to Ecuador, uh, where uh, the progressive uh, president, Rafael Correa, that was uh, elected, put in place uh, an audit, a citizen's audit auditing uh, committee for the public debt, uh, in which uh, Eric played a key role. And this is how he came to Greece shortly after the start of the crisis, to um, offer his expertise on the issue of the debt. And this involvement in uh, the Greek uh, events uh, went to an even higher stage when, uh, during this very short period, about which we will talk more eventually, of the first, of the first series of government, actually, from January to um, July 2015, uh, an auditing committee was put in place in early April of that year, uh, thanks to the initiative of the then president of the Greek parliament, Zoe Kostantopoulou. And Eric uh, coordinated uh, the expertise, if you like, side uh, of this with many other people, both from Greece and from outside of Greece, and of course he fully uh, offered the resources of his, uh, of his network. Uh, after the disaster, uh, Eric uh, remained committed as he was before to everything that has been happening in Greece, constantly it intervening, publishing. Uh, I think that your book on uh, the debt or a version of that first came out in Greek and eventually only was published in French, Spanish uh, and uh, very soon in, uh, uh, in English. Uh, he is uh, uh, a full actor of uh, the things that has been happening in Greece and a very precious, indispensable comrade 
for all of us who have been uh, uh, waging that uh, battle uh, all these years with all the difficulties and hardships that you know and you can imagine. Thank you, Statis. I'm confused <laughs> uh, listening to, to Statis. Uh, Statis is professor at the King's College in, in London, uh, but he is also uh, uh, a militant uh, and an activist. Uh, he participated to the political life in, in France, in Greece, in UK. Uh, he is uh, intervening on the, on the political debate around all the main uh, political uh, questions uh, around the question of the European Union. Uh, he was a member of the Central Committee of Syriza uh, until the decision uh, of uh, a part of the Syriza militancy to, to split from Syriza after the capitulation of the beginning of July 2015 and is now part of uh, popular unity. Uh, during uh, the first six months of the Tsipras experience, uh, he was uh, permanently commenting what was happening and uh, his uh, way of highlighting uh, the debate inside Syriza uh, was very useful for everybody who wanted to understand what was really happening uh, in Greece at this uh, moment. Uh, we are working together since uh, uh, several years, and uh, maybe we will uh, comment the fact that uh, we are together with other comrades who are uh, here in, in participating to the Subversive Festival. We are building uh, an initiative whose name is uh, Recommons Europe uh, to try to elaborate a proposal for a radical left government. Uh, and so uh, we have narrowed our collaboration in the last uh, uh, two years because we uh, share fundamentally the same conclusion uh, about what happened in, uh, in Greece and how to avoid uh, the repetition of the disillusion created by the uh, Syriza experience in the government in 2015. Thank you. And thank you, Statis. So, so thank you, Statis. We'll now say something about... Right. Uh, okay. Um, I will give you some reflections on uh, that experience of which I have been a part of until a certain moment, just to continue, of course, the fight from uh, another position. Uh, and uh, I think that you know, the Greek experience is a particularly painful one, and this is, this is the reason why uh, the lessons of it should be more widely debated and, and drawn. Uh, the British historian Perry Anderson compared Tsipras' capitulation in the summer of 2015 with the capitulation of German democ uh, social democracy when uh, the parliamentary group of the SPD voted the war credits in August 1914 and paved the way uh, to uh, the most brutal and uh, bloody episode which lasted one way or another for 30 years of the 20th century, a kind of modern form of apocalypse. Uh, it's not a world war that, uh, in, that was initiated by uh, Tsipras' capitulation, but the continuation and the deepening of the disaster that had started five years before, in 2010, when uh, Greece entered uh, the period of the so-called memoranda and its subjection to the Troika regime. I was told by people yesterday that a representative of Syriza at this uh, uh, at another event of this uh, festival, uh, presented the kind of standard uh, story of justification 
on, on their part, which is that you know, they did the best they could. Uh, of course, there was no other alternative, uh, you know, the TINA argument, but this time formulated by uh, supposedly people from uh, the, radical, uh, the radical left. And while doing all those you know, unpleasant but nevertheless unavoidable things, they protected the poorest. So let me start with uh, uh, a, a, a very brief, as brief as possible picture of the ongoing disaster and I will try to be as factually as, po as possible and be indulgent with you know, some figures and facts I will quote. I think they are necessary because explaining in more concrete terms the disaster would take much more time. Since entering the, in 2010, uh, the regime of the so-called memoranda, so the agreements between uh, the Greek government and the Troika of its uh, creditors, uh, Greece underwent a recession of, uh, in, in which uh, the country lost 26% of its GDP. It's the worst recession ever in any Western economy as appears in the last report of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, not some kind of leftist institution, as you probably know, uh, the Greek recession is worse, both in its magnitude and its, in its duration, than the US and German recession of the 1930s. In 2009, the Greek per capita GDP was 71% of the German uh, GDP, 69% uh, of that of France, it is now 43% of the German GDP and 47% of uh, France's GDP. The long-term forecast by that uh, same institution, the, the IMF, is that the Greek growth, and this is the best case scenario, will not exceed 1% in the forthcoming three decades. Uh, the unemployment rate in uh, Greece is currently 21%, 20.8 to be more precise, at about 47% for uh, the people under uh, 25. Uh, a th over a third of the population of the, of the country is exposed to the risk of extreme poverty. Only Romania and Bulgaria have a worst record in the European Union. This social situation led to a mass emigration comparable to the worst moments of Greek history in the 20th century. Uh, about 700,000 uh, people have left the country since the start of the crisis, approximately 450 of them Greeks, uh, and the rest foreign workers, but who before that were permanently based in Greece. Uh, concerning the Greek population that emigrated, 70% of them are, uni are university graduates. More than half of them are between 25 and 39. These are semi-official estimates by the Bank of Greece and other public agencies. It means that uh, the better educated generation in the history of the country is lost. Let's go to, hum, to some uh, social indicators. Uh, the budget of uh, the health sector has been slashed by half. Uh, Greece uh, spends now less than 5% of its GDP on uh, public health expenditure. It's the third lowest rate in the European uh, Union. Uh, and the new budget for the next year uh, has seen a further 10% of cuts in the budget of hospitals. Uh, being uh, implemented. Uh, the British journal The Guardian characterized Greek hospitals as danger zones, and uh, everyone who is remotely familiar with that situation knows that uh, there is nothing that we can imagine as a European stand standard uh, that is going on in a completely deprived and now derelict globally a system of public health, not only hospitals, but all the other infrastructures. The labor legislation. The labor legislation in Greece was one of the most advanced since uh, the early 1980s with the first socialist government labor leg legislations in Europe, uh, both concerning collective agreements and uh, labor union rights. Uh, the collective agreement system was completely dismantled from the outset from the first memorandum. It hasn't been, of course, re-established, although the 
government and its current Labour minister continue repeating the same lie that once Greece will get out of the current bailout in July of this year, those they will bring back this system. This is a pure lie. Uh, it has been already agreed with the Troika that none of the reforms that have been implemented in those eight years can be reversed in uh, the next period. The minimum wage, administratively, was brought down from 700 uh, euros gross huh, to uh, 5 and 20 net, 480 for the wage earners under 26 uh, in age. Uh, it means less than 500 in a net uh, salary. And currently, 38% of the wage earners in Greece less earn less than the minimum uh, wage. The government has only a couple of months ago passed a new package of anti-union laws severely restricting the right to strike, modeled on the Thatcher laws of the UK in which uh, a trade union needs to convene with its membership and win an internal vote of 50 plus one members in order to start a strike. One of the current topics in uh, current affairs in Greece is the issue of home repossessions. Uh, the socialist government of George Papandreou, just before, months before the uh, first memorandum, had passed a law protecting the main residency, the home, if you like, of people who were in debt. Uh, and this law proved quite effective, except that it has been de facto replaced by a law which gives full power to the banks uh, to uh, make repossessions of the home of people who are on debt. This was one of the main issues in the third memorandum that was signed by Cyprus in the summer of 2015. Uh, and uh, the current program uh, for this year is to allow for 15,000 home repossessions, which started in March, about the, 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 the target is for 1,500 per month. Uh, those repossessions, the procedure, initially happened in courts. And because of the reaction of activists who were going to the courts and preventing those uh, repossessions from happening, uh, the law was changed uh, at the demand of the Troika, and now, uh, the procedure happens electronically. So uh, the activists now gather in uh, the offices of the notaries uh, who accept, because a lot of them do not accept doing these kind of things, uh, and they face heavy police repression. But the current government changed the law in December of uh, last year and instituted a special crime punishing those who are preventing home repossessions from happening and punishing them from a prison sentence from three to six months. This is how Tsipras protected the poor. Just as a reminder, not a single home in the hands of the banks was one of the central slogans of Syriza in 2012 and in the elections of 2015 as well. Privatizations. Uh, the ongoing privatization program in Greece since the start of the crisis is the biggest ever privatization program in any Western European country. Uh, the whole design is closely following, it has been designed by the German experts, and it is, uh, du it is duplicating the way uh, the public property of Eastern Germany was uh, sold out and uh, passed on to the private sector. A, lot of, a significant part of those privatizations had happened before 2015. So now, hold your breath. All the public assets of Greece have been put in the hands of a special agency, the board of which is in majority nominated or has to be approved by the Troika. When I say all, it means all public buildings except archaeological sites. Huh? Everything that is inside any local council, any public building, and the obligation of that agency is to sell everything until the objective of 50 billion 
is met. According to all experts, even if the, uh, all the carpets of the ministries and local councils and universities are sold, this will never happen. Huh? So everything is on sale. So what has been sold under the Syriza government is the remaining 70% of the port of Piraeus and of all the rest of the ports. All the public utilities, the water companies have been privatized starting from Athens and Thessaloniki. And now what are they selling are the power plants of the public company which has been dismantled in, you know, the power stations, the, 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 the distribution grid of, of, of power, all this has been cut into pieces and all will be uh, sold to the private sector. Uh, the main airport of Athens was already in private uh, hands. 14 airports, the most profitable ones of the best destinations, uh, of the most touristy places, have been uh, sold to a German uh, company uh, of, uh, in majority ownership of the land of Hesse in uh, Germany. The Greek banks, which have been recapitalized with the debts that have been contracted and will be repaid by the Greek people at the level of 40 billion. Huh? Uh, as a reminder, the retaking, taking full public control of the banks for which the state had already paid those incredible sums. When I, we say the state, it means the taxpayers eh, who will repay the loans have been sold to speculative funds for four billions, hmm? 36 billions of loss. Unfortunately, this is not the end of the story because what uh, the memorandum signed by Tsipras has done is to dismantle what was left of the sovereignty of the Greek state, huh? which means that the key agencies, the, the remaining key agencies of the Greek state have now uh, passed, uh, taken out of the control of any elected government. Okay, the memoranda had already set the objectives of fiscal policy huh? for in, in all the time being. But what, what has now been instituted is a council for fiscal discipline the majority of which is either dominated of its members, either directly dominated or has to be approved by the Troika. And this independent agency can decide on cuts on the suspicion that the fiscal targets are not met in terms of budgetary surpluses. And those cuts will be implemented without any vote of the parliament. Legally, the decisions of that Council for Fiscal Discipline have a legal value equal of a decree issued by the Council of Ministers. The public agency collecting taxes, collecting taxes, uh, the General Secretariat for Revenue, has become independent. The majority of its members are directly dominated either by the Troika or have to be approved uh, by the Troika and is in charge of collecting taxes. Among others, repossessions of homes of people who owe money, not only to banks, but also to the state. Uh, uh, Eric will talk more generally about this issue. So you understand that what has been happening is that the state of affairs implemented with the memorandum has become a permanent state of affairs, a new state form which uh, I'm tempted to call peripheral, or peripheral authoritarian neoliberalism. Greece has become a protectorate of its creditors and it has become so with a government supposedly of the radical left. And of course this is, uh, and I realize that I have to be quite brief in the explanations that I give, why has this happened? There are actually two, two questions here that have to be resolved. The first is that how it came to that disaster, huh? how we have the kind of you know, biggest reversal of the situation probably ever witnessed in recent uh, European history. And the second is that not only how did we go to the disaster and the capitulation of the summer in 2015, but how in the last, in the three years that have passed since, this party, without any significant internal disagreement or differentiation, has been relentlessly implementing the program with the results that I have just mentioned. 
to cut a long story short, the capitulation of Syriza uh, is not due to some psychological deficiency of Alexis Tsipras. Uh, it is not due to a simple mistake, and it was certainly not a kind of fate or result, supposedly, of, you know, that there is no alternative thing. The reality is very simple. Syriza went completely unarmed in a confrontation with uh, the dominant classes of Europe and with the domestic dominant class of Greece. It went to a confrontation with uh, the Troika and with the European uh, the institutions of the European Union, without having prepared the slightest serious weapon to win over that confrontation and keep uh, faith and uh, uh, bring uh, into reality its commitment to the Greek people. The key point here is that there was absolutely no elaboration, no so-called plan B, uh, to react in an appropriate way to the totally expected and predicted blackmail pressure, which quickly became an all-out war launched by the European institutions against the first elected government of the radical left in the history of the country. And when I say it is totally predictable, I say that because before Syriza winning the January 2015 elections, we had the precedent of Ireland and Cyprus in which we saw how the ECB could force governments of other countries to accept the shock therapies uh, that uh, had to be passed uh, in order for those over-indebted countries uh, to repay uh, their debt. Yes. Um, in Greece, uh, the European Central Bank, uh, only a week after, or 10 days, after the January 15 uh, elections, uh, stopped the main channel of provision of liquidity to uh, the country and allowed only the so-called emergency mechanism to be uh, put in place. Um, this uh, very quickly led to the strangulation of the banking system and of the economy of uh, the country. The immediate political result of that is uh, the shameful agreement of February the 20th signed by Yanis Varoufakis in the name of the Greek government with the rest of the countries of the Eurogroup, which already contained all the seeds of the capitulation. Already in that agreement of February the 20th, uh, the Greek government had given up on its main objectives. It had accepted to repay fully and on time the Greek debt. It had accepted that every single legislative measure that should be passed by the Greek government should have been approved previously by uh, the Troika. It had accepted that the funds that were given uh, to the Greek government for the recapitalization of, of the banks could not be used to any other purpose, contrary to what uh, the Syriza program was, uh, was telling. The reality is that even after that, uh, the leadership of Syriza, Alexis Tsipras and the leadership of Syriza refused to start any discussion about alternative plans and proposals and proper ways to defend themselves, to defend their government and to defend uh, the Greek people against this all-out war, despite the fact that the significant sector of their own party, since the start of the crisis for a significant part, since <laughs> the, the, the latest events uh, for another part, clearly were ringing the alarm bell and proposing very concretely alternative proposals, including immediately stopping the repayment of the debt and preparing the conditions for the return to a national currency if things came to that, which indeed happened a few months later when uh, the referendum was uh, uh, announced by, uh, Alexis, uh, by Alexis Tsipras. Instead of doing this, the Greek government continued to repay the debt to the IMF in that uh, context, but Eric will talk to you uh, more about this. At the same time, the fact that the government was making concessions after concessions and entering a spiral, an endless spiral of retreat had neutralized the huge potential for popular mobilization that existed, of course, before 2015, 
everyone remembers the big cycle of popular mobilizations of the 2012, 2010, 2012 years, but, had, but that had restarted actually with the renewed self-confidence that the victory of Syriza had given to the Greek people. In February, before the agreement of uh, uh, the February the 20th, people spontaneously took to the streets and started uh, uh, demonstrating against the decisions of the ECB. And of course, the landmark here is the resounding result of the referendum of July in 2015, in which 63% uh, of the Greek people said no to uh, the Juncker plan, which was much lighter actually than uh, the memorandum signed up by Tsipras only a week after this victorious uh, referendum. I don't have time to develop what I was planning to say about the deeper changes in uh, which can explain this shift, if you like, and this uh, road to disaster. But the basic idea here is that uh, from the moment in 2012 when Syriza became the main opposition force in Greece uh, and was a government in waiting, it underwent a deep change in the structure of its party. Uh, the leadership uh, autonomized itself from the membership and from the elected bodies and instances of the party. Uh, the membership had actually lost the control of its own apparatus and uh, of its own leadership. And this is how actually Tsipras neutralized uh, the increasing weight of the left sector of, of its own party. The paradox here is that the left of Syriza was strengthening its positions within the party, but the party itself was steadily but very <laughs> inexorably losing its importance and uh, uh, its function as a decision-making uh, uh, political, uh, political space. And this is why uh, I think that uh, the issue of the party form uh, is absolutely central to understand how we went there and also to understand why Syriza continued to be the best possible vehicle for the type of policies that have been implemented since 2015. Because it, it, be, it has become an empty shell, if you like, that has destroyed the possibilities of popular mobilization and the sheer hope for change from within. And this is something that no other political force could achieve. The right or social democracy could never have achieved what uh, Syriza has uh, achieved so far. Passivity, demoralization, and, uh, and, and a broken uh, society. So I think that one of the lessons to be drawn is not only the necessity at the level of strategic thinking of how to prepare a serious confrontation and rupture with the European Union. This is for me not the whole, but the starting point of every serious strategic thinking of, for a left alternative in Europe. But we also need to think about the type of political practices that are involved, the way we relate to popular mobilizations and movements, and the way we build our own political tools uh, that can uh, achieve uh, the results uh, that any progressive emancipatory uh, politics should uh, give to themselves in that uh, period. Thank you and apologies for having been long. Uh, thank you. So, Eric. Yes, thank you, <coughs> Statis. Uh, I will uh, begin with uh, uh, remembering some concrete things, uh, uh, some concrete experience. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, as activist in, in Greece, uh, in 2000, end of 2010, so several months after the memorandum, uh, uh, several uh, activists launched a campaign for a citizen audit of the Greek debt. Uh, people like uh, Kostas Lapavitsas, who was a uh, guest uh, last year to the Subversive Festival, and who is also a, a comrade of uh, Statis Kouvelakis, 
uh, and other people launched with an international support, an initiative for a debt audit. And I was directly involved in this uh, initiative. Uh, it officially began in March 2011 with an international conference with the participation of 3,000 people and a documental uh, whose name was Deptocracy, who re which received a very uh, huge uh, audience in, uh, in Greece. Uh, in 2012, uh, after the movement of occupation of the square in uh, June, July uh, 2011, and under the, the influence of the campaign on the question of auditing the debt and questioning the legitimacy of the debt, uh, during the electoral campaign of May, June 2012, Syriza integrated in his program as a central point the demand of uh, that audit commission uh, and the suspension, unilateral suspension of the, of the payment of the debt. Uh, it was one of the main proposals of the, of the Syriza uh, during the electoral campaign, but there were 40 different proposals. I would say uh, all what we needed, what we need as anti-capitalist uh, demands were present in the program, electoral program of uh, May 2012. It was not in, a, in, in defined in, uh, with priorities really. There were five priorities suspension of the payment of the debt, audit of the banks, level limite de... To remove the, um, the immunity, I think, the legislative immunity mm -hmm. of MPs and politicians. Uh, and ministers, yes, and uh, another fiscal policy and to abrogate all the antisocial uh, uh, policies and, and laws taken uh, during the... the first and second memorandum. Uh, previously, Syriza get, uh, got 4% of the vote in the 2009 election. And in the June uh, 2012 election, uh, Syriza got 26.5% uh, of the vote. So it was very clear that for the next election, Syriza would uh, gain the election and would be the government, uh, one year, two years, or three years after the election of 2012. And I mention that because uh, when I met for the first time Alexis Tsipras in October 2012, so several months after this big victory at the level of the election, I uh, 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 took the conscious of a very radical move in the spirit of Tsipras. I think that the day after the, 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 the June election, uh, uh, Tsipras thought uh, at such a reaction. He, he said, wow, we will be the next government in the future and we are proposing very radical policies. And if we uh, really uh, put that policy into practice, we will enter in a confrontation with the European Union and with the capitalist class, the Greek capitalist class. And I think he, he, he was afraid of that. And he decided with several members of his uh, clan, he, he built, uh, I would say, an, a political, secret political nucleus around him. Apart from the official bodies of the Syriza party, and uh, he decided to promote another orientation, to avoid a direct confrontation with the European Union, and he, he, he began to elaborate 
another type of orientation, but not officially. And if you, for instance, if you compare the program with which the uh, series again the election of uh, January 2015, the Thessaloniki program, it was still a radical program with a rupture of uh, all austerity, uh, socialization of the banks, changing the law about the bank, uh, cancellation of the majority, the major part of the debt, uh, uh, taking very concrete uh, policies uh, in favor of the, the masses, and uh, 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 increasing the minimal wage and the pensionship. Uh, it was a radical program. But in reality, uh, Tsipras had elaborated uh, in the preparation of the election another type of program with the participation of Varoufakis, who was not a member of Syriza. And uh, also an explanation of, of why Tsipras uh, proposed to Varoufakis to be a minister, the minister of finances, he, he, is he wanted somebody who was not a member of Syriza. So a member who would not be under the pressure of the party in case of debate inside the party. And somebody who could be uh, eliminated uh, if he, he didn't fit in the uh, Tsipras orientation, which was not the official orientation of uh, his own party, Syriza. Uh, so it's a very complex situation. When uh, the Syriza gained the election with the radical program of Thessaloniki, it, it didn't uh, begin to implement this program. He implemented another orientation uh, which uh, was concretized with the uh, very uh, uh, mortal or funnest uh, uh, negative uh, agreement of the 20th uh, February 2015. So uh, what are the lessons uh, uh, about uh, this experience? Because I... I, I have not the time to explain what happens between February and, and June in, in detail. I, I want to concentrate myself about what uh, would have been possible and what lesson we have to, uh, to take into account to not repeat this uh, uh, disaster. I think uh, it would have been absolutely necessary uh, since the beginning of February to take unilateral uh, policies uh, from the government, as government. Uh, because as uh, 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 Statis told us, on the 4th of February, one week after the creation of uh, the Tsipras government, the European Central Bank, Central Bank decided unilaterally to stop the access of the Greek banks, banks to the liquidities of the European Central Bank. So in face of this unilateral and brutal and aggressive decision of the European Central Bank, the Tsipras government should have taken uh, a radical decision to take the control of the Greek banks, to impose a control of the capital on the capital movement, to suspend the payment of the debt to the Troika, beginning with the, the debt to the IMF, because in the first six months, the, the debt uh, which was to be repaid was the debt to the IMF and not to the ECB and not to the, uh, to the members of the, uh, to the countries of the Eurozone. Uh, um. So it could uh, 
uh, have taken the decision to concentrate the suspension of payment against the IMF, denouncing the role of the IMF in the Greek process in, uh, uh, since 2010, <laughs> and telling we are suspending the payment, meanwhile we are doing an audit. We, we, do, we do not repudiate immediately the, the, the debt. First, we will analyze with the citizen participation the legitimacy and the legality of the debt. And if the audit concludes with a uh, 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 recommendation to stop or, or to repudiate the debt because it is illegal and odious, we will repudiate uh, it. But first, we suspend the payment. Uh, they, they should also have taken uh, uh, very strong policies to alleviate uh, the situation of the mass masses, uh, reducing uh, the VAT, uh, uh, the, the, the tax, uh, the VAT uh, who paid the, 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 the Greek people, and to take um, measures to increase the minimum wage, to increase the pension ship, etc. It would have been possible to do that because. Uh, to, the, to the contrary to what happened, as uh, Satis told you, uh, the, uh, the decision of the uh, Tsipras government to repay the debt in the first six months uh, supposed, is supposed to pay 7,000 million euros to the creditors. If Greece had uh, retained this money, this 7,000 million euros, and uh, invested in uh, uh, making better the condition of life of the Greek population, and in stimulating the, the uh, economic activity inside Greece, we would have, uh, uh, have had very good result for the population and a, a challenge to the, to the creditors, because uh, the problem for the creditors, uh, they have no problem if you repay the debt. For the creditors, a problem began, uh, began if uh, the debtors decide not to pay the creditor. So uh, the Tsipras, if the Tsipras government had uh, taken the decision to stop the payment, the uh, ECB, the IMF, and the other creditors should have uh, uh, entered in a real negotiation, uh, when in reality they never uh, really uh, negotiate during the six first months uh, uh, of the Tsipras government. They, they made absolutely no uh, uh, no concession uh, to the Tsipras government, and they increase the pressure on the, on the Tsipras government. Uh, another thing who would have been absolutely necessary, and it's a lesson for the future, is uh, to refuse the secret diplomacy. What uh, Varoufakis and uh, Tsipras uh, have done is to uh, accept a diplomacy of secret with uh, Juncker, with Draghi, with uh, uh, Schoeble and uh, Merkel. You should remember that after each meeting in Brussels, uh, we had declaration from Tsipras and from Varoufakis t telling uh, we have some problem in the negotiation, but we are going, we will reach an agreement with the creditors, etc. They never publicly explain to the public, European public opinion, uh, the blackmail uh, organized by the creditors and the pressure, the lack total of democracy, uh, the total lack of respecting the the, democ the Greek democracy. Uh, so they, they accepted 
uh, the secret diplomacy, and uh, if we, we make a, a comparison with what happened uh, 100 years ago with the Bolshevik Revolution, one of the main decisions of the Soviet was to say, we uh, put an end to the secret diplomacy, and we will make public all the uh, previous agreement. Uh, there will be no any more secret diplomacy. And it was very important to explain to the people of Europe and to the Russian population what was really uh, uh, in, in, in question, in debate. And so imagine if Varoufakis and Tsipras have told to the population, European population, and the whole popul their own population what uh, exactly was the process of negotiation. And if they had combined that with calling the uh, Greek uh, and the uh, European uh, uh, population to uh, take initiative of solidarity and to make a public gathering uh, supporting the, the unilateral sovereign decision of the, the left government in Greece, uh, I am sure that we would uh, add the possibility to convoke uh, thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of people in the street of Europe in support of uh, what would have done a courageous uh, Tsipras government. You know, yesterday I was listening to uh, the comrade from the Link uh, and from Syriza telling that there was a lack of solidarity in Europe. But uh, how can you be in solidarity with a government who has not the courage to denounce what was happening and to challenge uh, what the creditors were doing. If uh, you cannot have a spontaneous international movement of solidarity, if you don't have, if you don't, as government, take the initiative to convoke for such a solidarity. Uh, uh, in all the experience of previous revolution, it is because the 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 left government asked for solidarity, that you have uh, the, the expression of solidarity. The Soviet asked for extending the world revolution. But uh, in the last uh, 50 years, the Nicaraguan uh, Sandinista uh, built a very strong movement of solidarity in the 80s and, and in the 90s. It's uh, the ABC of a political strategy. As a left, radical left uh, force, you should have a strategy to build an international campaign of solidarity and to give argument and to take initiative and to support the, the building of uh, solidarity uh, committees. And as government to say, we are supporting and we are calling you to, 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 to support uh, us. So, uh, I am concluding. One of the, uh, I think one of the, uh, another le lesson is to say uh, a radical left force should told his own population and the uh, public opinion if we uh, succeed in, be, in to be elected and if we uh, form a government, we take the compromise to disobey to the uh, European... The commitment. We, uh, we take the commitment, not the compromise, okay, the commitment... In Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the commitment to uh, disobey to the treaties and to disobey uh, to the decision of the European Commission and to disobey to the decision of the ECB and the, and the IMF. Because if we want to implement, implement uh, our uh, proposal to make better the life of our citizenship, we should disobey. It's an obligation, a moral obligation to disobey 
uh, to the treaties and to the uh, uh, blackmail uh, uh, of, the, of the creditors. So uh, it's one of the le lessons. You, uh, in the future, a radical left force cannot say to his own population, uh, please uh, support us in the election and give us a mandate to negotiate with Brussels. You, you cannot ask any more uh, such a thing. You, you should say to the population, give us a mandate to disobey to the treaty. Okay, we will negotiate with the creditors, but first taking a radical policy to make better your life. And we will negotiate uh, from a, a situation in which we will organize a correlation of forces in favor of our decision, mobilizing the population and calling for solidarity. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eric. Uh, very, very interested, uh, interesting lectures. So, um, Statis, uh, what was, uh, I would like to ask you first uh, questions, then we can uh, ask the audience. I'm sure they have uh, questions. Uh, what was the relation of the Syriza's leadership and Tsipras and Tsipras's clique uh, towards the Greek referendum, towards its results, and towards uh, pre preparation uh, this referendum? Um, it, it, it's still a matter of debate, huh, what was happening in the mind, huh, as we say, of Alexis Tsipras, that famous night of a Friday uh, in late June, uh, when he announced after a dramatic meeting of uh, the cabinet uh, the decision to uh, call for a, a referendum. The most uh, rightist part of the cabinet disagreed with the announcement. Uh, Dragasakis, more particularly, the number two of the government, and actually the real mastermind of the whole line. By the way, this is an element that appears very clearly in the book of Varoufakis, huh? the key role of uh, the two close uh, collaborators of Tsipras, Nikos Papas and uh, Yanis Dragasakis, uh, who constituted this kind of you know, secret cabinet, totally unaccountable to any kind of body and taking all the key decisions. So they disagreed with uh, this um, uh, uh, call for a referendum and they were quite right to disagree because they understood in a way better than Tsipras that the call for a referendum would trigger a dynamic of radicalization of the situation that could potentially go far beyond the, ten the intentions, whatever those intentions might have been, of uh, Alexis Tsipras uh, himself or the initiators. Huh? So he was probably not totally aware of the explosive material that he was fabricating in a way with that, uh, with that decision. Uh, the most, th there are only two plausible scenarios. Huh? The first is that he trivialized the issue, what he was officially saying, that you know, the referendum is just an extra card in our hands to improve our position in the ongoing negotiations. Huh? Those negotiations had already led to a near total capitulation and acceptance of uh, the so-called Juken plan, huh? and, and, and this was clearly a, a complete deadlock huh? and uh, uh, the, the, the end somehow, the, the end of the game, huh? uh, because they were conceiving that as a game. Huh? You know that Varoufakis had theorized that with his uh, game theory uh, type of, of approach. The other, more Machiavellian explanation is that he announced the referendum ho expecting and or hoping that he would lose it and therefore that he would be, he would have a kind of popular legitimation to capitulate. Huh? You, th you see, the people you know, have clearly decided, I have no other option, I have to accept this very hard pill, somehow to swallow this very, the, this very hard pill. Uh, what is absolutely certain is that he was completely taken aback 
by the dynamic of the popular mobilization and the absolutely amazing energy that came out of the depths of Greek society in those crucial 10 days. I, I was in Greece myself uh, in, in that entire uh, uh, period, going from you know, one public meeting and one uh, public uh, uh, re, um, uh, gathering to, uh, to another. I was also in charge of uh, holding meetings in workplaces because the, the left wing of Syriza controlled most of the trade union uh, and the workplaces branch of, uh, of, of the party. And th this was something day by day, I could even say hour by hour, I could see the change in the mind of the population, the increasing self-confidence, which led to this kind of extraordinary rally of uh, Friday, uh, July the 3rd, uh, when more than half a million uh, people gathered in central Athens, the, the biggest rally since the fall of the dictatorship, most likely in this, you know, absolutely gigantic uh, demonstration for the, uh, for, for, for the Ohi. What we also know, we have many testimonies, Varoufakis is one of those, uh, that Tsipras himself was very sad the day of uh, the demonstration. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, thousands of thousands of people were taken to the streets of Athens, celebrating, uh, drinking, and, and uh, shouting like mad uh, people. Uh, uh, the, 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 the resounding, completely uh, formidable victory. Uh, just as a reminder, the banks were closed since a week. People could only withdraw 20 euros per day from uh, the ATM, and everyone knew that there was uh, enough liquidity only for a few days after the referendum. And despite that, 63% uh, of the people, more than 75% of the young uh, voters, more than 70% of the voters in all the working class areas of the country voted uh, in favor of, of the no. Huh? Uh, so he was totally overwhelmed by what uh, happened. And it's quite telling that himself, when he talked to that gigantic rally, uh, he was completely decomposed by the sight of this extraordinary popular energy. And instead of talking the 40 minute speech he had prepared, he only talked for 10 minutes, saying completely stupid generalities and things like, you know, the Greek people love Europe and we will stay in Europe and these kind of things. He was terrorized, terrorized by the sight of the masses who had brought him to Syntagma Square in a Perron-style triumph uh, 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 with you know, all that uh, tremendous energy uh, uh, behind. Okay, uh, thank you. So we see here a lot of uh, historical path of energy and of uh, eruption. And at a crucial moment, this historical responsibility was even bigger than anticipated earlier. But uh, I'm sure that, uh, that the audience have uh, lots of questions. Uh, thank you very much for this. This was mind-blowing. And you did mention Yanoufakis several times. So I would like to ask both of you as experts both in finance and in politics following his behavior during the crisis. And now in aftermath, since he is a founder of DM25 that I'm personally interested in, so I haven't really heard a great judgment of his character here. So I'm a little bit uh, kind of skeptical about his political activism now. But to be honest, I am so desperate for improving European democracy and uh, that I haven't really studied in depth what he is proposing now uh, in his uh, in his fin uh, in his uh, financial part of the politics, which is very important because this is supposed to be his expertise, and both in political suggestions how he would improve Europe. So, if any of you have studied more in depth, can you make any uh, analysis and parallels um, also in his character? Now, how is he behaving now? how to say it oh, politely, is he honest about his, let's say, perception of his role at that time? Would you find that this would be honest witnessing of his own role? Or would you kind of give him any kind of benefit that he, 
I, I don't know, so like that's more or less, like, should I engage in that party as a volunteer more or less, or should I be doing something else, like going to a gym? Thank you. <laughs> Eric has written a, a very detailed and extremely precise uh, um, uh, comment and uh, discussion of the book of uh, Yanis Varoufakis, and uh, I, I just helped him a bit, and uh, other people in Greece, uh, you know, this, this uh, Eric has a whole network uh, of people in Greece who, who are there, you know, to feed him with uh, uh, info coming from, you know, the country, uh, uh, the country itself. So I think he's very well placed to give, you know, a, a very precise reply to this. So uh, I strongly disagree w with what uh, Varoufakis has done before the victory of uh, Syriza in January 2015 because he engaged himself in a neg secret, secret negotiation with Triplas, Papas, and Ragasakis against the decision of Syriza to build another type of orientation uh, uh, and he explained that in his, in his uh, book, uh, Adults in the Room. So he, he recognized it and, and he uh, is in some way proud of uh, having uh, played uh, this role or influencing uh, Tsipras to uh, uh, adopt an orientation of uh, a soft negotiation with the, with the creditors. Uh, he explains that he, he had a sort of plan X. He doesn't he, he, he don't say plan B, he said plan X. So he said, uh, I, I, I convinced Tsipras uh, to not uh, question the, the Euro, the participation to the Eurozone, uh, to not, uh, I convinced him to not take uh, a uh, policy of controlling the movement of capital. Uh, he accepted not to take the control of the banks. He was proposing to give the control of the Greek banks to the European creditors. He says that in his book. Okay, so I disagree totally with this orientation. And I disagree with the fact that he accepted this secret diplomacy during the first first six months. Uh, now, uh, I make a very uh, important difference between Tsipras and uh, Varoufakis about what happened at the beginning of July. Uh, uh, Tsipras organized the capitulation uh, uh, after the referendum uh, against his uh, commitment to respect the 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 referendum of the fifth, the result of the referendum of the fifth of July, and uh, uh, Varoufakis opposed uh, the capitulation. But at the same time, I, I, I am convinced that the way uh, the orientation adopted by Varoufakis war, was uh, uh, preparing the, the capitulation. Uh, but it, it at I, I, I recognize that he didn't uh, accept at the end the concrete capitulation, and he opposed. He voted against. I was there in the in the Greek Parliament uh, the night uh, between uh, 15 and 16, or no, 12 and 13 of uh, July. I was there, uh, and I. More than 30 members of the parliament, members of Syriza, opposed the capitulation. And uh, Varoufakis one, was one of uh, the comrades who opposed the capitulation, and it is uh, important. About the present uh, orientation of Varoufakis, I disagree uh, on the fact that it, he he wants to maintain an ambiguity on the possibility of reforming the European Union and the Eurozone. Uh, 
Personally, I, I know because we had the discussion and Alex was in discussion, uh, Alex Merlo and me and Miguel Urban and others were, were invited by Varoufakis to sign the manifesto he launched in February 2016 in Berlin as DiEM25. And uh, Alex, and I support him, uh, wrote several uh, amendments. Alex is there, <laughs> okay? Uh, and uh, saying we cannot, in the manifesto, say that uh, we can, uh, in some way, reform the European Union. And uh, Varoufakis answered us, telling, OK, I am convinced that we cannot reform the European Re Union, but I don't want to say that in the manifesto, because I want to convince people who are still uh, convinced that we can reform the European Re Union to join the M25. And I, I don't agree with uh, such an orientation. You have to tell the people what is exactly your opinion of what to do about the European Union. We cannot maintain, after the experience of uh, 2015, an ambiguity, an ambiguous position on the possibility to, to reform the European Union. It is why I am not supporting uh, the DiEM25 uh, initiative. Uh, I also telling you that I was coordinating the work of the Debt Truth Committee. So I didn't uh, Satis mention it. So in February 2015, I went to meet the president of the Greek parliament, uh, Zoe uh, Kostantopoulo, and I proposed to her to launch a debt audit commission with an international participation. She asked me to coordinate the work of such a committee, and I accepted. And uh, Tsipras accepted the initiative taken by the president of the parliament. And officially, he was supporting us. He came to the inaugural, inaugural uh, uh, session of the Debt Truth Committee inside the parliament, the 4th of April 2015. And we were negotiating with Varoufakis his support as finance minister to the Debt Truth Committee. And he never uh, really uh, gave his uh, real support to, to what we were doing. Uh, officially he was supporting, he came to the, to the parliament and he said publicly, I will uh, uh, collaborate with the Debt Truth Committee, but in reality, he boycott our work. And we, we had people inside the advisor of uh, Varouk Fakis who wanted to join us and to help us because they, were, they had access to the data of the Ministry of Finances and Varoufakis tells them you cannot uh, collaborate to the Debt Truth Committee. So uh, uh, also concretely, uh, I think he, 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 he took a very wrong uh, uh, concrete position or, uh, in relation with the Debt uh, Truth Committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you want to comment it? Uh, I was just looking, uh, just one second, and uh, the, the first public interview about DiEM here in Croatia, I think two months ago, the first line was, uh, it says, maybe it will surprise you, but DiEM25 is not a leftist movement. So they say also here that they are not leftists, uh, considering what you said uh, earlier. Uh, so uh, we had this their question. Okay, I have uh, two short questions. Uh, first is, um, how come that uh, there was no any real discussion about, uh, because you said uh, the capitulation was, let's say, prepared, and how come, because, I mean, Syriza is, uh, let's say, an umbrella of a lot of parties, how come there was no, uh, some kind of leak of the information of what's happening, how come there was not any kind of report that negotiation are, like, in very, uh, rare state uh, finished or it's already uh, conclu concluded what 
will be done. Yeah, that's first question. And the second question is, uh, it seems, yes, the series are really destroyed uh, people's hope. And uh, so what is now to be done, uh, uh, like, um, in terms of, uh, um, because uh, uh, you, you don't have no more this mobilization force, uh, in terms of, like, a uh, lot of people, plenty of people on the streets, how to, how to be political force, in, in what way, and, uh, yeah, okay. How to go against this kind of parliament? Yeah. This is the mic. So. Right. Okay. Um, right. I, I didn't have enough, of course, time to develop. But you know, the, the main idea of, of my talk is that we had the essential information, and you know, everyone had it. I mean, everyone understood, particularly after the agreement of February the twentieth, that you know the government was losing ground, to put it very mildly, and had its hands tied up by uh, the Troika, uh, and that we were going straight to the disaster. That feeling became even more clear when uh, overturning the decision of the political secretariat of Ceres at the end of April, uh, that decision said we, should, we would not pay the May payment to the IMF, like Eric explained before, uh, and instead of uh, respecting that decision of the Secretariat of the Party, which was in line actually with uh, a lot of you know, the general line of what Syriza formally at least had already declared, uh, the government not only paid uh, the IMF, but in order to pay the IMF, because there was absolutely no cash in the reserves of the central government, it seized the cash reserves of public institutions in Greece to repay the IMF. It seized the cash reserves of hospitals, of universities, of local councils. It wanted, uh, Zoe Constantopoulou refused to have the cash reserves of the Greek parliament being seized to repay the IMF. So it was quite clear that we were heading to disaster. Uh, and the reaction inside Syriza, of course, increased. Hmm? Uh, until then, uh, because there was proportional representation of the tendencies uh, inside Syriza, the left platform, so the most structured left sector of Syriza, and the most coherent one, because it had, you know, clear positions on the key issues uh, since the start of the crisis, represented 30% of the party and therefore, you know, 30% of the Central Committee, to put it very uh, uh, simply. From February onwards, uh, the, our proposals in the Central Committee received gradually 40, up to 45% of the vote. Huh? So a whole sector of the party that previously didn't agree with us was now on, you know, the what to do, uh, we were on a very similar line. We were calling that the emergence of the block of rupture. This included Zoe Constantopoulou, uh, the Maoist component of, uh, uh, of, of Syriza, uh, and, and various other people who were not in the left platform and didn't agree with us on the issue of the euro, for instance, huh? but were much more open to uh, stopping repaying the debt, for instance. Huh? But as I was telling before, that had absolutely no consequence on the decisions that Tsipras was taking and that the cabinet was taking. But even inside the cabinet, there was no proper functioning of the cabinet. This is something that you learn by reading Varoufakis. Huh? The real decisions of the government were not even taken in the meetings of the cabinet. First of all, because there was a mini cabinet of the key ministers that was convening separately, and from, from which the ministers of the left platform were very quickly totally excluded. And even within that, it was actually the so-called secret directorate that was in the internal jargon, the way we called uh, uh, the economies, the key economists, plus papas, I mean, you know, this kind of, uh, uh, the, the nucleus of people uh, Eric was talking about. So although our weight was increasing inside the party, this was of no consequence in the concrete way poli the policy making, the key policy uh, decisions were, were, were taken. Huh? We were completely short-circuited because we were dispossessed 
of the political control of what was happening. And I could see that, you know, it, it was quite clear. First of all, the Central Committee was convening less and less frequently. Huh? The, 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 the meetings were more and more chaotic. Uh, no notes, were, no transcripts was done. It was clear that this was just a formality for the leadership. They just wanted to get rid of that. For them, it was just, you know, a completely secondary and unimportant issue. Uh, on the second issue, what is to be done? You mean what is to be done in, in Greece or more generally? Okay, so look, in Greece the situation is very green. Uh, we have, I mean, we, we are in the face of, you know, a low intensity social resistance against, you know, the various fronts uh, in, on which we can gather some forces. Uh, so we have campaigns and resistance on the front of home repossessions, okay? On the struggle against privatizations uh, on, of, of the various you know, public utilities, but also real estate, and I didn't mention this, huh? uh, the, the, the biggest real estate operation since the collapse of uh, the so-called socialist countries in Europe is the selling of the former airport of Athens to a holding of Qatari, uh, capital with Greek oligarchs also being part of that, they will build uh, Dubai on the seafront of Greece. Huh? Uh, the, we still have the pictures of Alexis Tsipras leading mass demonstrations against the selling of that, uh, of the, of that, of that airport. Huh? They circulate, you find them easily on the social media and, and, and on the internet. So we have, you know, uh, uh, strikes, uh, 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 we have the important mobilization of precarious teachers uh, in public education. Uh, so we have, we have the pensioners, I didn't mention the issue of the pension. Uh, the pensions have lost 43% of uh, their value since the start of the crisis. They have been reduced 17 times, and the new round of reduction will happen at the start of next year, in which the pensions will lose 20% 20, uh, 20 more of their, of their value. So the average pension in Greece will be, according to semi-official estimates, uh, Savas Robolis is the the, the, the quasi-official government expert on the issue of pension, and he has estimated that after the new round of cuts, the average pension in Greece will be of 480 euros net, with the cost of living that in many aspects in Greece is comparable to Western European countries if you put housing uh, costs uh, aside. Uh, so we have, you know, this a new cycle of struggles and experience is necessary to rebuild little by little uh, the, the social front and the political expressions of that. But one of the most important issues is the one mentioned before by, by Eric, and this is you know, the elaboration that needs to be done at the level of alternatives, uh, of alternative thinking in, in a way that you know, is both general, you know, gives a kind of general vision uh, of, of change, uh, but also sufficiently concrete and precise to be credible and to show concretely that, you know, other ways are possible. And, and this, of course, has to be specific to the various contexts, eh? because obviously the context of Croatia is not the same as in Greece or as in France or, 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 or elsewhere. But nevertheless, you know, there are some uh, common directions, and with Eric and uh, other people, we are uh, committed to participate in, in, in those elaborations. And of course, we feel close to all political forces in Europe that have taken the lesson, and there are important forces. Uh, I, I mean, I want to warn you about this. Uh, uh, you know, ye yesterday the people of the panel, uh, the you know, the people of the Link, etc., were talking. Uh, as I was told, I was not present for obvious reasons, uh, as if they were representing uh, the European radical left. They they represent only a minority of uh, that European radical left. You will see in the next elections that the major regroupment that has been officially announced uh, in, in Europe is between uh, Mélenchon's movement, France Insoumise in France, uh, Podemos in Spain, the left bloc in Portugal, and the red-green alliance in Denmark. And these political uh, forces have taken the lesson of Greece to a, to a very large extent, more clear for uh, some than uh, for others, and, and, and they have uh, very clearly said that they don't want to repeat uh, 
uh, what Cypress and Syriza uh, have done. Huh? So, uh, you know, the configuration is moving very far from what we knew uh, uh, now, and at least, you know, the Greek disaster has, uh, has been useful uh, for, for that. Huh? Thank you. We, had, uh, we have a question over there. Okay, uh, Stratis, you mentioned in your introductory uh, uh, speech that you will elaborate a, a bit on a party forum, so I think like this, this may be a, a, the right time for that. And uh, I read your piece about the Congress held in 2013, uh, which was sort of, um, it was informative in a way for me uh, that it was presented by the, the, by the Tsipras clique as as an, an attempt to uh, improve on the democracy within the party, whereas it was actually a clamp down on the left within the party, on the organized left, uh, it basically demanded from the left organizations to dismantle. Now, some of those organizations actually did dismantle, some didn't, uh, but like, could you elaborate a bit more on that? Because like, those are some of the concrete stuff that, that, yes. that will prove useful for us. Yes, um, okay. Um, well, let, let, let me start in a bit of a pre, with a bit of a pretentious jargon, but it will last less than a minute. Huh? Uh, what I will describe is what in mainstream political science is described as uh, the transformation of parties in so-called cartel parties. Huh? In a more Marxist language, uh, Nikos Poulanzas uh, uh, proposed uh, the notion of the statization of parties in his last major work. Uh, state power and, and socialism, which is indispensable reading for anyone uh, who wants to think seriously about uh, left strategy uh, currently. Um, let me put it this way. Um, before 2013, the first founding Congress, Syriza was uh, a militant uh, democratic party of the radical left, but also a very fragmented one. It was militant, it was involved in social movements and in social practices with weaknesses. It has never been particularly strong in the working class and in the trade union movement, but it had a presence uh, even there. Uh, it had a rich internal life. The, uh, the, 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 the party was really a space where concrete politics were discussed, put in practice, uh, uh, tested, uh, uh, and there was a communication, a political culture was elaborated, which was, plurali which was pluralistic, which is good, but the downside of that was the fragmentation, because it was a coalition of different organizations, each organization with its own elected bodies, with its own leadership, with its own internal structures, and uh, uh, it was coexisting rather well in the common framework, but the concrete process of decision making, despite the openness of the debates and the richness of the internal life of the party, was always mediated by deals between the leaderships of the various constituents parts of the organization. So there was a general agreement that after 2012, with Syriza becoming the main uh, opposition force and with its level of electoral support going from 4 to 25 percent, this needed to be changed. Huh? But as you said, instead of putting forward a genuine process of unification from below, if you like, of the party, by really, you know, recruiting a mass membership among all those layers that were involved in the biggest mass movements that Greek society had known since the 1970s, uh, what they did was to unify in a bureaucratic way the party, increasing a top-down functioning, um, dissolving, as you say, but in a very bureaucratic way, most of those uh, internal constituents, making the leader completely unaccountable to the elected bodies because the leader was directly elected by the Congress of Syriza. This was one of the most hotly disputed points of uh, the founding Congress. So there was a dual legitimacy eh, in the leadership of the party. The president of the party, Alexis Tsipras, and the Central Committee. At the same time, the Central Committee was initially 300 members large, then reduced to 200. So you can't have a serious decision-making body with even 200 people. And fast-track procedures 
were systematized. Huh? To prepare the founding Congress, we had just one month. The ultra-Stalinist Greek Communist Party uh, gives three to four months to prepare their Congresses. Huh? And, and they had much more, you know, even this apparent kind of internal debate than we had materially the time to, to do for uh, our founding conference. So it was quite clear that what they wanted was an electoral leader-centered machine uh, which decisively moved from the terrain of mass politics and social movements to pure electoral tactics. And the whole strategy of how to bring down the fragile majority that had emerged from the 2012 elections was totally oriented towards parliamentary tactics and discounting mass action and popular mobilization. So you see, the whole configuration inside the party changed. And you know, you talked about the climb down on, on the left, and this is absolutely true. Huh? Let, let me put it in the standard you know, jargon of internal life of left-wing parties. Usually, what happens in the parties of the left, of any kind of left actually, is that the leader is in the center, there is a right wing, there is a left wing, and the leader is, you know, maintains a kind of balance between these two sections. This is what Tsipras did until the summer of 2012. This is why we, a lot of people had hopes that he would continue to do that eventually. But what happened in reality was a unilateral front only against the left of the party. And, you know, I was elected in the Central Committee in 2012, in the first national conference preparing uh, the Congress of the party. It was the first time in my life that I was part of such, you know, the leading body, let's say, uh, of, of the party, even of a very problematic one. And what struck me, just as, you know, as an experience, is that the atmosphere had completely changed from what I knew before. It was not anymore the atmosphere of sometimes, you know, very sharp disagreements huh, that we had, but always fought on with political arguments and, you know, and so on. No, we were not perceived as comrades disagreeing with, we were perceived as disruptive elements preventing these people to realize their plan, which was just that, you know, in two years' time, they knew that they would have seats in the ministries. Huh? They were doing their business and we were disruptive uh, elements, you know, putting, you know, uh, uh, annoying them and, and uh, causing uh, unnecessary trouble somehow in the well-ordered path uh, to governmental uh, power. It was so obvious, you know, and, and this is what could unite a very heterogeneous majority. That was something completely new. Uh, uh, you know, the majority supporting Syriza included completely heterogeneous people. Uh, very nationalist, very anti-nationalist ones. Very statist, very movementist. Very horizontalist, very verticalist. Uh, people quite radical on, uh, you know, the social agenda. People much more moderate on the social agenda. People coming from the old Stalinist party. People coming from totally different backgrounds, including Trotskyism. How could all these people suddenly you know, be so nice with each other, so confrontational uh, with us, all of them. Well, they were, their cohesion came from the fact that they were convinced and they had agreed between them on how to share the posts in uh, the governmental power that, you know, they were at the gates uh, of that. I don't know if I answered your question, perhaps not sufficiently theoretically, but, you know, I, I tried to convey, you know, a concrete sense of how things uh, happened. Uh, thank you. Uh, do we have questions? You mentioned earlier the uh, Communist Party of Greek. I want to know what is the position, what is the relation between new left movement uh, like Syriza and traditional Leninist Party? And um, what, uh, what is the uh, nowadays attitude? Uh, 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 I heard that uh, uh, the Communists, which are also members of the Parliament, are one of the biggest critics of political Syriza. Thank you. I'm sorry, can you repeat it, but louder? Yes, because, and are you talking of Syriza now or of Syriza before? Mm. Ah. Uh, I am interested uh, 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 in about the conflict between a traditional Leninist party Communist Party of Greek and Syriza, and the criticism from the 
traditional, as you mentioned, Stalinist party of uh, Communist Party of Greek. And what the, the, is now the position uh, between the Communist Party? Yes, uh, and relationship between uh, Syriza and. Uh, uh, Communist Party, thank you. Okay, 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 I got it, okay, I got it. Okay, yes. Um, right, okay, so le let me first remind you that uh, the Greek Communist Party, which indeed, you know, they, they have uh, published recently the complete works of Stalin, huh? so something they hadn't done in the 1970s or in the 1980s. Huh? They were a Brezhnevite, if you would like, party at the time, but not a Stalinist one. Now they have fully rehabilitated Stalin. Huh? They have fully rehabilitated the so-called third period moment of the third international, the social, the line of social fascism. They don't claim anymore the heritage of the Greek resistance, of EAM. They consider that it was a reformist, uh, opportunistic uh, line. So anything that was you know, broad and mass-oriented is anathema uh, for them. But the Greek Communist Party was the major force of the Greek left until including 2010. Uh, it was on the electoral ground superior to Syriza, almost a double in terms of their electoral performance, and even more so in terms of membership and roots in the, particularly in the working class uh, and in the trade union movement, but also in the student youth. Huh? They, they, they had, uh, uh, and, and still have to a certain extent, an important uh, uh, militant basis in, uh, in, in, in universities. It's not a party of old people, huh? contrary to what uh, many people think. Huh? They, they, they just think that because it is a Stalinist, it's just you know, old people, nostalgic of you know, the glories of, of the past. You have that but you also have a much younger membership attracted by the fact that it appears as a very radical party and different from all the others. The main problem with the Kukwe is that it is an extremely sectarian party, and this is why they have rehabilitated all those moments of the Stalinist history, if you like, of the communist uh, uh, movement in Greece, is to justify their sectarianism. And they started, they lost ground in 2012, uh, when uh, Tsipras and Syriza came out in the course of the electoral campaign saying our proposal is a unitary government of the left in order to reverse austerity and to end the memoranda. This electrified the country because for the first time the people had the feeling yet that yes, there is a concrete force that is wants you know, really to take governmental power to build a broad coalition of forces and to bring concrete and immediate solutions to uh, the problems the country is facing, uh, not you know, struggling for socialism in, in, in 100 years or, or so. And uh, the Communist Party, Syriza officially called the Communist Party and the coalition of the far left uh, to go to, into negotiations uh, to form a unitary proposal, including for a governmental collaboration. And the Communist Party immediately refused. And from that moment onwards, they lost a significant part of their electoral support. Since then, they remain, they keep on repeating the same very sectarian uh, line. And now they say, okay, you know, we have been vindicated, uh, they have, uh, uh, their, their betrayal is now obvious, but that we knew that from the start, and we have been vindicated, okay, but they haven't won a single vote and they haven't won any kind of militant force since. On top of that, I have to add that the Communist Party not only abstained, but also was against uh, the most dynamic uh, forms of the popular mobilization of, of, the, of the recent period. It, it uh, condemned the movement of the occupations of the square as an uh, anti-political, anti-communist, pity bourgeois movement. Uh, we are talking about you know, the, one of the biggest mass mobilizations that together with uh, the Spanish ones of the Indignados shook Europe uh, very deeply in uh, between 2010 and 2012. So it's a, combin it's a strange political animal, if you like, huh? the Kukue, the Greek Communist Party, combining extreme sectarianism and a kind of ultra-left rhetoric. Huh? They constantly talk about, you know, the proletariat, the revolution, socialism, and, you know, all, all this class struggle, etc. And, and they are a completely 
passive part in a way. And this is why everyone is very polite with them and has always been. Huh? You know, the right wing press, the mainstream media, they are very polite. They say these are very, you know, we disagree with them, but they are quite people actually. You know, they, they, are, they are nice. They don't create real, you know, trouble and so on. It's a, it's a very strange, if you like, situation. Huh? Okay, thank you. We have a room for uh, one or two questions, and then, okay. So, uh, we are not uh, at the end of history. Uh, history goes on. So, uh, the next election is uh, looming with uh, Nea Democratia uh, 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 very much f for, uh, forward from uh, Syriza. So, Syriza now is at a very low level uh, at the poll, and probably they lose. They lost uh, the the next election. So, what do you think? Will uh, uh, Alexis Tsipras remain uh, at the ch as the chief of Syriza? And if Syriza uh, lose the election, will it remain a, a party, or uh, will it split again in its uh, uh, different elements? Thank you. Um, the, for me, the main element of the looming elections, as all indicators tend to show, is not the fact that new democracy uh, will win, but the fact that the majority of the Greek electorate will abstain. Already, the September 2015 elections, after the capitulation, those, you know, the maneuver of Tsipras actually to, you know, blackmail in a way the people and, and win a new mandate, uh, the turnout reached a record low level in the entire Greek history. 45% uh, of the people abstained. Uh, so Syriza lost nearly 700,000 votes. Uh, it's huge uh, in an electorate of the less than 5 million. But most of them went to abstention. Uh, Popular Unity and the other left forces captured only a fraction of them. Uh, people are completely disgusted with politics particularly young people, uh, hundreds of thousands have emigrated in the country. Huh? You know, in, in the element of resignation, demoralization, and social passivity, you have to take into account that the most lively forces of Greek society are, I see them in London, in my neighborhood, uh, you can see them in Germany, you can see them in Australia, in the United States, in all the countries, in Scandinavia, in all the countries where you know, the young Greek people I was talking in my presentation about have emigrated uh, since. Um, so uh, the way, uh, if, if, if we look at tactics and the way Syriza itself sees, the, what, what is their objective? Huh? Their objective is very simple. They bet on the passivity. They bet on the low turnout with the calculation that there is no serious competitor on the left, because this is the only way, of course, huh, for Syriza to be out to maneuver. Huh? It's the way PASOK was out to maneuver. PASOK collapsed not only because it implemented the memoranda, but because it had a credible competitor to its left, Syriza at the time. Huh? So in order to have the, a similar PASOKification of Syriza, it cannot happen automatically. What happens automatically is abstention and refusal of politics and, and abstention from any form of political participation. But in order to have an active rejection of that, uh, you need to have an alternative, a progressive alternative to Syriza. And that is unfortunately not at hand in, uh, in, in the current uh, situation, uh, despite our efforts. So their calculation is that they will lose the elections, but they will still appear as a credible force for a future government. They want to lose, if, you, if, if I may put it that way, with what they are predicted in you know, the recent, in most of the polls, huh, that they will get, I don't know, 20%, around 20%, let's say, of the vote, and new democracy 30-something, and therefore, okay, the next mandate will be new democracy, but they will still be a credible force for alternating into power huh? With, uh, in, in the future and seeking for allies. Tsipras is, always, is already making and has been making since several months, actually, openings to the various remnants 
uh, of the so-called center left and, and, and so on uh, to build you know, possible future uh, alliances. Uh, so the main task uh, for progressive forces to Greece is to build a credible alternative and try to counter this tendency to abstention rejection of politics and refusal of any form of political participation. And this is a very hard task because hope has been destroyed from within and the people see us. And when I say us, first of all, including I include myself huh, in this, they see the, us as part of the problem because we have failed. It's very simple. They said, you were in Syriza. You represented a substantial part of the party. You had positions in the elected bodies. You had ministers uh, in, in, in the cabinet. And you have been unable to change things and you know, to counter uh, the, uh, what, what Tsipras and so, so you are useless, basically. And this is the hardest argument to counter. Huh? The people will recognize that, okay, you are honest, you didn't betray, you are not like the others, etc. but you are impotent, you are powerless, and you have proved that you have been powerless. And the same is valid for the other left forces. The other left forces also were useless. What did the Communist Party, what has the Communist Party been able to do? What has the far left coalition been able to do in a moment when everything changed in the Greek society? When Greek society underwent its biggest upheaval since half a century? They were unable to intervene, to change the course of events. If you don't do that in that situation, then what's the point? of you know, being a political party and, and a political force. Huh? And you see, this is actually, these are the hard questions uh, to which uh, we, need to, we need to answer. And, and believe me, it's, 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 it's very difficult. Huh? It, it has taken a very heavy toll, you know, this, uh, uh, this whole situation. Personally, Personally, uh, uh, at my age, you know, I have the feeling that I fought the battle of my generation, if you like. My hopes are in the younger people, uh, that they take the lessons and, uh, you know, they don't commit and they don't repeat our sins and our mistakes. Okay, we can conclude with, uh, with that. Uh, thank you all.